Don't you 12 going on from some of the extension or the further applications of the Moirad's theorem. So this lesson we just did looked at equating coefficients of uh, cis 3 theta so we could get cos 3 theta and sine 3 theta in terms of just a single theta. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the reverse of that. But before I do the reverse of that, I'm going to introduce you to some extra knowledge, some bonus knowledge that you're going to use. So what we need to do to start with is have a look at some things. So first up, remember with our, uh, our prerequisite sheet, we looked at this. Cos negative a sine negative a and tan negative a. Don't really need tan, but I'm going to put it in there anyway. And we know all stations to central, and we know that negative a is down here. And if a is an angle here, and negative a is down here. Well, cos is positive there, so cos of negative a is the same as cos of a. They're equal. Sine of negative a is negative sine of the same acute angle. And of course, tan follows suit. And that's going to become important a little later. So, what we're going to do now, and that's for angle zero to, so this is where a is between zero and pi and two. They're acute angles. All right, so let's start with this first bit. So if we start here, z equals cis theta, right, just some unitary measure. If z equals cis theta, well, by the Morris theorem, we know z to the n is cis theta to the n. And we know that that is cis n theta, which gives us cos n theta plus i sine n theta. All right, but what about z to the minus n? Well, that's cis theta to the minus n. Well, just because it's a negative power, the same rules apply. So we get cos negative n theta plus i sine negative n theta. Oh, but we know when cos is acute, now that this is just going to be cos n theta. And this is going to be minus sine or i sine n theta. And this is really cool because if we look at this and call it equation number one, look at this and call it equation number two, what can we do? Well, if we, and by the way, that's z to the n, and this is z to the minus n. Well, let's think about what z to the n and plus 1 on z to the n. So adding those two, well, that's the same as adding z to the n plus z to the minus n, there's our indice laws. Now if we add these two equations, if we add 1 and 2, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 2 cos n theta. We're going to get two of these ones. We're going to get that there and that there, because the i signs will cancel. The i sine theta and the i sine n theta, sorry, will cancel. Okay, well, what about z to the n minus 1 on z to the n? Well, that's the same as z 
to the n minus z to the minus m. And what do we get there? Well, this time, the causes will cancel. And when I go equation number one minus equation number two, minus and minus gives me a plus, so I get 2i sine n theta. Now, let's take that a little bit further. Or, let's say we have this. Well, that means 1 on z. So, z plus 1 on z equals 2 cos theta. All right, because n is 1. And what about z squared plus 1 on z squared? Well, that's 2 cos 2 theta. All right, I'm just using this law here. Well, what about cubed? z cubed plus 1 on z cubed. Well, it equals 2 cos 3 theta. All right. If I went the other way over here, if I had z to the n minus 1 on, sorry, z to the 1 minus z to the 1. Well, that's 2i sine theta. Well, z squared minus 1 on z squared. Oh, 2i sine 2 theta. It's pretty obvious. z cubed minus 1 on z cubed. Well, that's 2i sine 3 theta. So keep that, keep that little bit of information in your head for later. So what are we going to do now? Now, earlier I told you that one of the reasons we use this is for integration. And this is where it's going to work because we're going to convert cos to the 5 theta because we really want to be able to do that integration of cos to the 5 theta and we can't or cos to the 5x all right so we know that 2 cos theta from just above is 1 on z Z plus 1 on Z. So, 2 cos theta to the 5 equals Z plus 1 on Z. And remember, what is Z? Z is, go back here. We started very at the beginning if z was cis theta. Alright, so 1 on z to the 5. Remember that z is just cis theta. So 2 cos theta is z plus 1 on z, where z is cis theta. 2 cos to the 5. Well, that's easy. On the left hand side here, we get 2 to the 5 cos to the 5 theta. And over here, when we get z, all oh, right, so Pascal's triangle, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to expand this. So I'm going to get z to the 5, and then I'm going to get 5 z to the 4 times 1 on z. And then I'm going to get 10 z cubed times 1 on z squared. And then I'm going to get 10 z squared times 1 on z cubed, nearly there. Then I'm going to get 
five z times one on z to the four plus one on z to the five. Now I'm going to put all of them together. So if I tidy that up, I'm going to get z to the five. I'm going to bring that one right at the back, right next to it. So one on z to the five. Now, here, in this little bit here, that's just going to become 5z cubed. All right, well, 5z well, cubed. Oh. 5z cubed. And if I look at this one over here, that's going to be 5z to the minus 3, or... 5 on z cubed. Hey, wow, look at that. So, and here in this next one, in this next one here, that's going to become 10z to the 1. Okay, so 10z to 1, so plus 10z. I'm not going to write to the 1. And this one here is going to become 10 z to the minus 1. Oh, so plus 10, 1 on z. All right, so what do I get now from this? Well, I know, well, I'll just factorise those numbers out. So I get, let's tidy it up, z to the 5 plus 1 on z to the 5 plus 5 z cubed plus 1 on z cubed plus 10 z plus 1 on z. Now, let's go back here and have a look. We said, look at this, we've got these things here. So I can write those as 2 cos theta or 2 cos 2 theta or 2 cos 3 theta. So we go back here and what do we get? We get 2 cos 5 theta plus 5 times, and this bit in here is 2 cos 3 theta, 2 cos 3 theta, and this one here is 10 times 2 cos theta, plus 10 2 cos theta. All right, let's tidy them up a bit more. So I get 2 cos 5 theta, plus 10 cos 3 theta, plus, and there's times in there, 20 cos theta. But remember what we had on the left hand side. We had 2 to the 5 cos to the 5. 2 to the 5 is 32 cos to the 5 theta. So I can divide that 32 through and I'm going to get cos to the 5 theta equals 2 on 32 cos 5 theta plus 10 on 32 cos 3 theta plus 20 on 32 cos theta. And if I tidy that up, I get 1 on 16 cos 5 theta plus 5 on 16 cos 3 theta plus uh, 5 on 8 cos theta and now now I can write cos to the 5 theta in terms of single thetas or single powers now what about sine well now sine's going to be a little bit tricky now because I'm going to be dealing with I so let's move on so that's how you do cos to the 5 theta Let's take sine cubed theta. 
I want to write sine cubed theta. All right. Two i sine theta equals z minus one on z. Where? What is z again? Z is cis theta. Okay. Let's cube both sides. 2i sine theta equals z minus 1 on z cubed. Let's deal with the left-hand side first. Oops, sorry, I forgot to cube it. 2 cubed. I'm just jumping in the same. That's 8. i cubed. Negative i. All right, so negative i. So it's times negative i, and I get sine cubed. All right, so we've got the left-hand side, negative 8i sine cubed theta. What do we get over here? All right, well, Pascal's triangle again, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. Ah, oh, we're going to get four of these. So we're going to get z to the 3. Now, this is minus, so I've got to go minus, well, first thing's plus, next one's minus. Minus z, oh, hold on, 3z squared times 1 on z plus 3z times 1 on z squared minus 1 on z cubed. All right, so let's tidy that up. And note, I'm going to get the 2z cubed straight away. I'm going to get z cubed minus 1 on z cubed. And here, this 3z squared, these two, are going to come out and they're going to be, all right, minus 3z plus 3, 1 on z. All right, let's tidy that up a bit. Z cubed minus 1 on z cubed. And if you look here, I've got a plus between these two. Not if I factorise out minus 3, I'll get z minus 1 on z. Okay. Now, remember, we know that z cubed minus 1 on z cubed, and right back here, here it is. Look at it again. 2i sine 3 theta. Okay, so we go back here. Z cubed is 2i sine 3 theta. And this is just going to be minus 3 times 2i sine theta. So I'm going to get 2i sine 3 theta minus 6i sine theta. Now remember on the left hand side we've got minus 8i sine cubed theta. Well let's divide by minus 8i. So over here we'll get sine cubed theta. So that's what we wanted to get, sine cubed theta in terms of these other ones. If I divide by minus 8i, I get negative a quarter. I hope you understand that because the i's will cancel and 2 on 8 is a quarter. And over here, I'll get plus 3 quarters sine theta if I divide by 8i. And there we have it. There is sine cube theta, what it is in terms of single powers. Right. That should be enough for you to go and have a go at exercise 4F, and I want you to do questions 4, and I've got a sneaking feeling I've just done it, 7 and 8. I think sine cube theta is question 4. All right, good luck.